Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about the attempt with some bad legislation and the final showdown in Delaware? Delaware! Hi. I'm in Delaware. The new Bloodline series of AR-15 barrels from Roscoe Manufacturing combines their years of industry experience making barrels for OEM use and brings that straight to you, the consumer. Using high quality materials and coatings, they make sure that the products they make hold up to hard use. Available now in 5.56 NATO, 300 Blackout, and soon in 9mm, they have the barrel to complete your custom build the right way. To get 10% off your barrel, use the code TGC10 at RoscoeManufacturing.com. We continue to see anti-gun bills being introduced at the state level with some effectiveness. See New Jersey. Delaware is no exception to the list of states affected by this plague. Fortunately, a grassroots movement, Delaware Gun Rights, has formed and is bringing the fight to Legislative Hall at the end of the month. I'm going to quickly recap a few of the bills that are pending before we talk about the final showdown itself. SB 163 is the assault weapons ban that was introduced by Senator Townsend. It's modeled after the Firearm Safety Act of 2013, which had passed in Maryland. You may remember the videos we did on that. If not, check out the playlist. Earlier in the month, I attended a committee hearing where this bill was being heard and eventually did not make it out of committee. However, it can still be brought to the floor for a vote with a suspension of the rules. Senator Townsend had argued it was constitutional because the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals had said it was. Unfortunately for him, Delaware is in the Third Circuit. Delaware State's Constitution also has a provision in it, Article 1, Section 20, which guarantees the individual right to keep and bear arms. Maryland's Constitution has no such provision. The bill is exactly what you would expect. It would ban the sale, possession, and transfer of assault weapons, with a few limited exceptions. In essence, it would create two classes of people. Those who were able to possess a certain group of firearms because they had them prior to the effective date, and those who would be unable to have them at all. As with numerous other versions of the assault weapons bans that have been introduced, it was done under a flawed premise, the illusion of public safety. HB 366 seeks to penalize gun owners for storing their firearms in a manner that they see fit. The bill would create a standard for which individuals must store their firearms or be held liable in the event an unauthorized person took possession of the firearm. The bill adds enhanced penalties if that unauthorized person then utilizes the firearm in a criminal manner. Most ironic about this one is that there's a Yale study that shows safe storage laws lead to an increase in violent crime. The link to that study is down in the description. HB 375 originally looked to implement the legislator's favorite number in relation to magazine capacity limits. That being 10. ten really? Ten? Is that because they can only count to 10? However, it was amended to limit individuals to a 17 round magazine. And you gotta love the bill's synopsis. In acknowledgement that there's thousands of law-abiding Delawareans currently possessing large capacity magazines lawfully, this act makes such possession unlawful only if it occurs in a public space while in possession of a firearm capable of accepting it. Why else would you have it? Possession of a large capacity magazine in areas that are not public places remains legal and this act permits the possession and use of large capacity magazines at shooting ranges. If it pleases the crown. Now. The text of the bill actually defines unlawfully possessed or unlawful possession to mean possession of a large capacity magazine in a public place while in possession of a firearm capable of accepting such magazine or possession of short term rental outside of a shooting range or for a duration of more than eight hours. Hot potato. So you're allowed to have large capacity magazines as long as it's not in a public place for more than eight hours. HB 330 follows Florida's lead in restricting the constitutional rights of individuals under 21 from purchasing long guns. Interestingly, the bill was amended three separate times to exclude individuals in the armed forces, remove shotgun and muzzle loaders from the definition of firearms, and exclude rifle, shotgun, and rimfire ammunition from the definitions of firearm and ammunition that a person may sell, give, or transfer to a person under 21 years of age. Simply put, it would make it unlawful for anyone to sell or give a rifle to anyone who's under 21 unless that person was their parent. 
There's also a proposed amendment to allow an exception for anyone who has completed the hunter's safety course. Exceptions for days. Lastly, SB 215, which is a good bill. The bill would establish a fund to allow for school safety projects such as bullet-resistant glass and film, screening of individuals entering the building, key card entrances, video cameras, and other projects authorized by the state. It also would require at least two individuals on staff to provide security services and carry a firearm. Interesting. Now, this bill did not make it out of committee the other day, but it's still possible it could be brought to the floor for a vote. The final showdown when the legislator votes on all of these bills happens Saturday, June 30th at Legislative Hall in Dover. Now I know people are going to ask, how do they stop this? DGR is meeting at 4 p.m. outside of Legislative Hall, doors to the hall open at 5, and the gavel drops at 6 p.m. for what is usually an all-nighter. It's common for these sessions to go until 5 a.m. If you're a Delawarean, go show your support. If you can't make it, contact your representatives, senators, and the governor ahead of time to voice your opposition for the anti-gun bills and to show support for the school safety bill. Together, you guys can stop the madness. And that's it for this episode. If you've learned anything from the show, help us out and hit that like button on the video, share it with your friends. Don't forget to get subscribed, and if you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us via the links down in the video description. If you want to get more out of your TGC subscription, be sure to check out the Gun Collective podcast, which happens live on Thursday evenings. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.